Hello, everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Hold on. Hold on. Hello, hello. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was just making sure my uh, my technology is working properly. I hope you can hear me, um, Sarah L. E. Um, I um, deleted deleted an episode, and I'll tell you why. I deleted it because the person that I was dealing with finally got back to me, and I'm willing to give him another chance. Give him another chance. But the issue that I want to deal with still remains, and I believe that it's a worldwide issue, and it's especially an issue now. I don't know, I don't know if if uh, countries that um, I don't know if non-Western countries deal with it. I'm not even going to worry right now about being politically correct. I'm just going to be myself. But um, countries, if your country is not on the list, forgive me. Countries like America. I'm American and I'm dealing with it in my country um, Australia United Kingdom um, any English speaking Western culture that is predominantly capitalist and corporate and based on money you know has a system that is very much revolving around money and finances and the banks and things the banks you know that you know what I'm talking about the money the, the finances Excuse me, I still I'm still recovering from a cough. Um, I'm speaking of this because in in a capitalist system, and I'm and I'm not saying that judgmentally, because I'm I support I would support any other economic system or, or political system or whatnot. When you are busy trying to make a living, if you're if you're poor and working class or middle class and you're trying to make a living, the system, now mind you, uh, please, don't deny it. The system will compel you constantly to be making more money all the time because you're trying to make ends meet. You know, you're trying to support your family. You're trying to be supported. You're trying to um, survive. I get it. You know, even even those of us who have to collect disability benefits, um, you know, America, Australia, United Kingdom, Canada, other countries, New Zealand, any any country that is based on dealing with money all the time. And if you're living in a country like Mexico, etc., or um, you know, you're still trying to survive. You're preoccupied with trying to survive all the time. If you're <coughs> even a member of you know, you're kind of above the middle class. You know, you're you're in the ranks of uh, people like Donald Trump, or um, you live in a mansion, or you live. You know, you're rich. You know, you're you're rich financially. You're rich uh, financially. Um, you're always trying to make more money. You know, and, I, and I'm saying that very objectively. And um, I'll get into the subjective thing. Um, my uncle, it's affecting, it has affected my family, it has affected me, it has affected my loved ones, the ones that I, I will call them my loved ones, because even, even the ones that left me, the ones that, that have passed away, the ones that um, are still alive and still surviving and have chosen to move on and uh, basically leave me and my roommate out of their lives. Um, they're still my loved ones because I still care about them and it still broke my heart that they chose to uh, leave even though I, I'm graciously letting them go their excuse is always I'm busy I'm trying to survive I'm trying to make ends meet I'm trying to work I'm trying to make a living I'm always working uh, my uncle had that excuse the last time we spoke uh, last year, a year and a half ago, the last time we spoke, um, his excuse was, "I'm busy, I'm working, I'm, I'm, or I'm retiring and I'm tired and I'm, and I'm making up for lost time, you know, whatever that I work too hard and all that." And uh, 
the consequences. The end result is he didn't keep in touch with my roommate and me by telephone. He, he gave us basically the uh, email and social media treatment. Uh, he's not on social media, so it was just, he basically, his way of caring about us was sending us form letters and, and, and photo cards and, um, you know, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing in itself, but the system leaves us so exhausted and so burned out that we neglect our loved ones emotionally. And I feared that was happening with this friend that I looked up over the holidays back in November. Um, he didn't get back to me for a really long time. Not to mention I had to inform him, or I felt I felt compelled to uh, inform him that his wife, his former wife, had passed away. And again, since uh, she and I actually did have a falling out because her of her uh, sometimes abusive treatment of me, because she had an anger issue that she had trouble getting under control. Um, she passed away unbeknownst to me, unbeknownst to him. She passed away, and... Um, he finally emailed me emailed me again after Facebooking me and um I set a boundary with him and I said, Listen, I'd like to uh talk on the telephone and text and I don't even mind email but uh, I'd like to stay connected with you and I'd like you to call my roommate too or text him. If you need our phone numbers you may uh, ask again. You can ask over email or, or Facebook, whatever you want. But I'm not focusing on Facebook or social media to stay in touch with you. I'm focusing on it for my work. And I'm not going to be too busy. You know, you can talk to me by email or by phone anytime you need to. If I'm not available, I'll, I'll call you back or I'll text you back. Especially when uh, you just found out from me that your former wife that you're you're still friends with died that you care about I know you cared about her and all that and I cared about her too and the issue that I want to address everyone is this social media is a, is a great tool it's awesome and it's good for networking we're connected in networking and knowing about one another like we've never like we've never before and I think that's awesome and wonderful. And it's great to, um, you know, be able to look each other up. Because that's, that's how I was able to look up Tom, you know, my friend. That's how I was able to look up his uh, former wife, who's now passed away. His former wife, Anne, who's passed away. I'm giving, giving you all pseudonyms to protect. And... Um, I think it's great that I was able to find you on face find them on Facebook and on the web. But I'm not using the web and Facebook as a means to maintain a friendship. And I told Tom this. I said, "Listen, your chances of maintaining your friendship with me, my chances of maintaining my friendship with you is by telephone and face to face if you're still in town and he is." Uh, she moved to Michigan. The wife moved to Michigan to live with a boyfriend. That's why I wonder if uh, her death might be from uh, the relationship she had with him. You know, I, I wonder if he killed her or if she killed herself. And I wonder, of course, if she died from uh, COVID. Because a lot of people died from this damn coronavirus. You know, it's enough to make me swear. Because I had it. My roommate and I had it uh, for over Christmas, and I'm not sure I recovered. Even though I test negative, I don't know if I recovered from it yet because I'm still, I still have these terrible sinus problems, and I'm trying to figure out within myself how to consult with a physician or healthcare provider again without um, getting force tested for COVID and quarantined against my will. Because many of us don't want to go through that again. I don't. 
I quarantined myself when I had the COVID and and I ended the quarantine when I tested negative and um, finished my uh, 10 days. Then I've been sick a lot, sick like off and on since then, maybe with after effects. And I, I even wonder if I've got long COVID now. And um, I think it's important more than ever to stay in touch with loved ones when we're going through this. The internet is a tool. Social media is a tool, not an end. Social media is a good way to network. And I looked at Tom's profile again, and he said he wanted to network with people that, um, preferably people that didn't uh, have Jesus, didn't do Jesus. And I respect that. I hope you can't hear the dog barking in the background. I'm going to plug my ears so I don't have to listen to that and let, let that zap my brain while I'm trying to focus on talking right now. Um, but it might not bother you to hear the barking in the background. Anyway, that's the neighbor's dog, by the way. That's not even our dog. It's, that's how loud it is. Um, I was relieved to find out in his latest email that he will still be my friend, even though I'm, I've accepted Jesus. And uh, that that goes to show too that that um, religion is sometimes is often a very personal thing, and what other people might understand about religion may 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 be understood by you personally. So um, that's why religion is such a hot topic, and that's why friendships often break up over religion. And I was afraid that. Um, he didn't want to deal with me because of my uh, beliefs and my uh, devices, my spiritual devices. And um, I was also afraid that he wanted to just have a, a Facebook relationship with me. And I thought that was a little weird after he had a face-to-face -face and telephone relationship with me and his wife, um, his former wife. You notice I'm not saying ex-wife. I think the, the word ex is very negative. I say former because they used to be married. In fact, I was at their wedding, and um, I was concerned about even, about even them getting married. Because, uh, you know, they, they, they were fighting a lot, even when they were just living together. So, um, as you might surmise, um, she could have she could have killed herself, because she had emotional issues and mental issues. And I knew her long before I developed my own mental wellness process. And she and I were having our own problems. And I, I watched them continually fighting. And she would call me sometimes and say, yeah, I had a fight with Tom again. Sometimes uh, he would even call me and say, yeah, I had a f another fight with Anne. And that was usually when he called me. He would usually call me when he had a fight with her, my friend. So uh, I was friends with both of them, essentially. And since I was friends with both of them, I thought I didn't have to worry about any jealousy issues popping up or any uh, insecurities, you know, with their relationship, in their relationship. So it hurt me when he didn't get back to me or call me after November. It kind of hurt. And um, I, got, I got mad at him, you know, because I thought, gee willikers, now he just wants a social media social media thing with me. He just wants to be with me on social media. And that's a little weird after all we've been through a long time ago. I was even ready to, ready to give him up, you know. But um, I don't want to give him up, and I'm glad, you know, I'm glad he emailed me. Maybe we're friends again, but guys, don't use social media as an end. Just use it as a means. Use it as a means to network and look each other up. Use it as a telephone book for face-to-face -face relationships. You know, do the rest for networking, and if you end up having a face-to-face -face from that, that's a luxury. But if you already have a face-to-face -face relationship with someone you know online, don't forget to do face-to-face, -face, please. Stay connected, everyone. Don't use the Internet to disconnect. Use it to connect. Blessing, blessings.